purpose. And here's the thing, as I was studying this week for today, I thought, well, I don't know if everybody's going to remember all these Proverbs I'm going to throw at you because it deals with the word better. But there's something I want you to write down, and I want you to contemplate it, and I want you to think through it. Amen. This is one of those powerful principles. Amen. Uh, Sister Kim, go to a falsehood. Amen. You'll see it there. It should be the, there it is. A falsehood tolerated becomes a stronghold empowered. Write that down, Cheryl. That's important. A falsehood tolerated becomes a stronghold empowered. You've got to challenge every lie that seeks to shape your mind, no matter how comforting it may be. Let me say that again. You, you've got to challenge every lie. The Scripture says, cast down every imagination and thought that tries to exalt itself above God. There are those that don't believe there's a heaven or a hell. If you don't believe there's a heaven or a hell, then it becomes a falsehood tolerated. And if you don't know there's a hell, you'll live like there's no hell. And we forget there is a devil. Amen. There is a Satan. There is. Go back to that. I'm going to stay on. I'm going to beat this until, until I can't beat it no more. A falsehood tolerated becomes a stronghold in power. If you don't feel loved, if you don't feel that God loves you, it becomes a falsehood tolerated. And it will develop a stronghold in your life, and you'll start self-hatred, and you'll start hating yourself. If you don't think God has provided for you, that God doesn't have a purpose for you, this is why this book here is so important, because it abolishes all the lies that we say to ourselves over and over again. Our, our nation, our world right now is being uh, confounded with this idea. I, 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 I broke this week. I, I hurt so much for a friend of mine that I went to high school with. His wife passed away this week, and she passed away with the, uh, the virus. Now, not necessarily because of it, but she had it. And people were posting all over it, for God's sake, wear a mask. Wear a mask. Like somehow the mask is going to protect you from a virus. Now, because here I'm going to tell you that it is a falsehood that has been tolerated that has caused a stronghold. I'm not against wearing a mask. I will wear a mask. I, I've got, I can get on a plane today. I've got to wear a mask to get on the plane. I've got to wear a mask to walk into Whataburger. I've got to wear a mask at times. I understand that. But the bottom line is, is that it doesn't protect you from, it, it stops you from giving me. Are you following me? It ain't protecting you from it. It's protecting me. So I appreciate those that wear it. But the bottom line is, is we have bought into things over and over again, and we tolerate things. And if you tolerate a falsehood long enough, it becomes a stronghold in your life. How about this? I can't, I can't, uh, I'll never be able to live for God. I hear this. Pastor, I got addictions in my life. I got issues in my life. I'll never be. Do you understand the scripture teaches you are more than an overcomer? Because Christ loves you. And when you fall in love with him, it gives you strength over sin. It gives you power over addiction because you love him. Great love toward God equals strong resistance toward sin. So the more I love God, it, it, you know, people say, Pastor, why don't you drink? That's a good question. First off, if I did, I would be dead. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've had more fun serving God, but I can tell you when I was a drunkard, I was a terrible man. Amen. I was, I was awful. I, I was obnoxious. You think I'm obnoxious now? You give me some Mad Dog 2020 and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll get real stupid. We should have been warned years ago, right? With Mad Dog 2020, it should have told us something was coming. Uh, anyway, the, 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 the flip side of all that is understanding in life that it, it's, it's not something that's, that I can do. I can't do it. I can't, I can't touch it. So, cause, and I can't even tolerate it. Because it's a falsehood to me. It's a lie that the devil would tell me, hey, you can handle just a little bit. I can't. I know me. You give me, I can't stop at one. I can't stop at a six-pack. can't stop at 12. I, I, I know me. So knowing me has helped me to stay away from it. I'm going to say it again. A falsehood tolerated becomes a stronghold empowered. The more I believe a, a falsehood in my mind and I tolerate it, then I, the strongholds start grabbing my life. That's why it's important that you have to break this thing of fear. Can I get an amen? Yeah, I mean, you've got to fight this. Fear, fear is a terrible thing. Amen. It'll jack with you. Oh, oh, uh, Willard was fishing. Oh, he was standing out there fishing. He walked out there barefooted, and he, he got up on the creek bank, and he started fishing. Amen. He's scared. 
scared to snakes. Snakes just bother old barefoot Willard. Amen. He just gets scared of them. And, and he's fishing, but he's catching them bass, and he's having a lot of fun. So while he's catching them, he realized he run out of them night crawlers, and he's like, what am I going to do? And he looked down there, and there was a water moccasin had a toady frog in his mouth. And he thought, man, I'm scared of snakes, but I would love to fish. Sometimes your love got to be greater than your fear. Amen. So he reached down there, and he, he reached back behind him. And he had a little moonshine with him, and he took it, and he poured it right over the top of that water moccasin's head. And that water moccasin reached up there, and he licked that, that, uh, that, 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 that moonshine, and he let go of that toady frog. So he grabbed that toady frog. He started fishing him a little bit more. He fishing. Boy, he's just having him a good time fishing. And bastard trying to hit that toady frog. All of a sudden, he felt a little tug on his, on his little toe. And he looked down there, and there was that water moccasin. And he had two toady frogs in his mouth. <laughs> your love, your love got to be greater than your fear. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 1. Hallelujah. I've got to tell you something you're going to remember. Amen. I just want you to remember a few things here. Hallelujah. It's, it's going to be a great, everybody say a great week. It's going to be a great week. Amen. And, and I believe that getting together and being with family, many of you know that Lori and I are going to be flying out right after church. And I'm trying not to put my mind too much on them grandkids, but going up there to see them. Little Colton called me this week, my grandboy, and he said, Papa, I'm out of school for 10 days. Come see me. He don't know I'm coming. Amen. That's the joy of all that. Do you know what I'm saying? Amen. I said, well, that's a long way to go, boy. He said, come see me, Papa. He said, I'm out of school for 10 days. I, I got it. And, uh, what he's saying is, I ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> Amen. You come up here, I have me something to do. Amen. I have something going on. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 1 says, Better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with feasting and conflict. The King James says it this way, Better is a dry morsel and quietness thereof than a house full of sacrifices with strife. The message says, A meal of bread and water and contented peace is better than a banquet spiced with quarrels. I go back to the statement I started off with, A falsehood tolerated becomes a stronghold empowered. When you think in your mind that this falsehood here, that i got to get more stuff in order to be happy, you just bid into something that's going to cause a stronghold and cause you to go broke. Because you'll be spending what you don't have. Amen. You'll be getting in credit card trouble. You can't do it. you got to have contentment. Everybody say contentment. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Amen. There's no question in our minds that God is good and we praise Him. And we did this morning. But this season that we're fixing to go through across our country, millions of people are going to get together and they, they're going to celebrate Thanksgiving. And, amen. And they'll go into homes. But some will go into homes and there'll be, they'll be strife. Some folk, you know, they're they kind of glad they can use the excuse that the government said stay home. That way they ain't got to go deal with family this week. Right. Amen. I'm telling you the truth and shaming the devil right now because that's, that's the truth. I, well, I can't, the government told me I can't come to your house. Hallelujah. I mean, uh, never mind. Amen. But the issue is learning how to be thankful. Being thankful. Philippians 4, 6. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Repeat it again. Amen. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Amen. Present your request known to God. Psalm 100, one of my favorite psalms. Amen. It says, on your feet now, give God praise. Applaud Him. Bring a gift of laughter. When's the last time you realized that your laughter was a gift. I love watching people laugh. I love making people happy. When people laugh, it blesses me. Because laughter does good like a medicine. Amen. You didn't even have to pay for that. All you had to do was laugh. Hallelujah. When I said toady frog, some of you, some of you had to look going, what do you mean by toady frog? I'm practicing my Cajun when I get to toady frog. Hallelujah. That's what I'm doing there. But the bottom line is you smiled, and to see you smile is a wonderful thing. Amen. To laugh and to learn how to laugh. So it says, bring forth the gift of laughter. Sing yourself into his presence. We've done that this morning. Know this God is God, and God, God, he made us. We didn't make him. Hallelujah. We're his people. We don't even make up gods. Amen. We understand that God made us. We're his well-intended sheep. Enter with the password. Thank you. Everybody say thank you. Say it again. Thank you. Make yourselves at home. Talk in praise. Thank Him and worship Him. Uh, that word thank you is such an important thing. Amen. To give God and to give one another an appreciation for what they just did. Thank you. Thank, thank you will open doors for you. You know, the year was 1620. You don't remember it. 
The pilgrims had just landed. It is a well-known fact that the pilgrims came, amen, because of their Christian faith. They came to America. Let's not rewrite history. Let's believe what it is. They came to America because they loved God, because they believed that God was leading them. They were not deists, amen. They were biblical Christians who believed that Almighty God had brought them to the shores of this nation. William Bradford, in, the, in his book of Plymouth Plantation, tells the reaction of the pilgrims when they landed at Cape Cod. He said, quote, Being thus arrived in a good harbor and brought safe to land, they fell upon their knees and blessed the God of heaven who had brought them over the vast and furious ocean and delivered them from all the perils of miseries thereof. Again, to set their feet on the firm and stable earth, their proper element, and no marvel if they were thus joyful. Now, that's a lot of words to say, we made it. To come all the way over to water, amen, to land on the other side, to put your feet on terra firma, amen, was a wonderful thing. Peter Marshall commented on that and says, They had begun their long journey by kneeling on the dock of Bell's Haven, amen, and to ask God's blessing. They ended it on the sands of Cape Cod, kneeling to thank God for his blessing. you got to thank God when you're going, amen, and when you're coming. Can I get an amen? So what's the secret of Thanksgiving? I believe this, you know, it's about rejoicing and rejoicing again. I know that uh, there's, um, there could be problems with people that aren't appreciative of things that are going on in their life. It's been a tough year for a lot of folk. But I, I, I'm convinced that the word is contentment. Philippians 4.11 says, I have learned to be content. Learned. Learn. Y'all know what learned is? That's when you go from fourth grade to fifth grade to sixth grade. You went up another level. You learned something. Amen. You kept moving up. That's important in life. you got to learn this thing. Some folk just never catch it. But when you learn it, amen, to be content on whatever the circumstances, and I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty, Paul speaking. Amen. I know what it is to, to be, have plenty. I also have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Contentment. Powerful word. Amen. I remind myself. You know, I preach my, to me all the time. Y'all just happen to be here. But it's about me. I think to myself, I want another vehicle. Or I want this. Or I want another gun. I just need one more gun. And I'll be content for another six months. Uh huh. Y'all follow me, James? Amen. I just need one. And we got this spirit that comes over us. And you got to fight that thing. Everybody say, fight that thing. Oh, I think about, I want a fast car again. I got a fast car, but I want, a, I want another fast car. Amen. And I think about it. Oh, and I wrestled over that thing and said I went and I bought my wife a convertible. And it, 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 it brought great contentment into her life. <laughs> Amen. It did. Amen. Contentment is real. Life. And, and that's important. It was important for me to do that because it kind of broke that thing in me and said, okay, I can wait. I can believe God for later. Amen. I'm just going to keep driving my truck. I got a great truck. Hallelujah. I just keep driving that old truck. And I call it an old truck, which has got 87,000 miles on it, and it's two and a half years old. Amen. So I, but, but I realize it's a Dodge. It can go a long time. Amen. Contentment is, re- is realizing how much you already have. Have you ever just walked through your place and realized how much you already have? Amen. What a bless. How, how much God. It's easy for Sam and Val to live in an RV. Amen. You got this big old building right here in front of you. You can come over here and just get all the space you need, Sam, right here. You have just great contentment in your life. How much God has already given you and how rich you already are. Amen. And it's not just in things. It's in life. It's in people. It's in family. The problem with many of us is we approach Thanksgiving focused on the circumstances of life. And far too many of us take our happiness and our joy and our contentment by how things are going on the outside. Contentment is not a matter of outward circumstances. Amen. Contentment is a matter of understanding how much you already have and how much God loves you. Amen. So when I walk through the scripture, I read in the book of Proverbs, amen, chapter 12, verse 9. It says, better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no food. Ooh, better. Everybody say better. That verse always cheers me up when I read it because better to have no reputation and be thought of as a nothing and yet have your needs met than to be some hot air big shot and yet starve to death in your own home. Amen. I, I don't want to do that. Proverbs 15, 16. Better a little. Everybody say better. 
Better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. You know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Too many of us have bought into the notion that money is going to bring happiness. Amen. The Scripture is not against wealth. It's not against prosperity. Matter of fact, it teaches us that, it, that it, we can have it uh, and have an abundant life. But let's be honest about it. Generally speaking, the people who have a lot of money have also a lot of problems. Amen. A lot of problems. You know that's the truth. If you've got money, everybody you know wants some of it. Maybe not everybody. But you're going to find out you got more friends than you ever. you got relatives that come out of the world. I still get relatives on the Facebook posting. Now, are you kin to me? I hadn't heard about it yet. You know, I've learned to protect people. You know, if folk got stuff, I learned to protect them. I don't, I don't tell folk what everything they got. Amen. But there are those that are so wealthy that they're imprisoned by their riches. So it is with the multimillionaires and billionaires of this world. The more money you have, the more problems you're going to have. It's better to have just a little and the fear of God. And I'm not trying to teach you to go broke. I'm just telling you that it's a better. And when I, when I read this, i got to remind myself. Let's put it in balance. Who wrote this? Solomon. Who is Solomon? One of the wealthiest guys in the whole world. Amen. He got into a place in his life when he said, you know what? It's better. It's better to have a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth and turmoil. I, I would rather have a little than to have all the turmoil that goes along with it. Amen. Uh, uh, Proverbs 15, 17. Better a meal of vegetables where there is love than a fatted calf with hatred. Whoo! Better a meal with veggies. All you vegans. Where there is love. Than a fatted calf with hatred. In other words, how, what did you say that, Pastor? It's better to eat cold pinto beans where people love you than to have a T-bone steak where they can't stand to look at your face. Amen. I'd rather eat a cold can of pork and beans. Amen. To be around people with a, with a great big meal that don't like me to be around. Amen. It's because you know that, you know, if you go back home, you got, is there going to be strife? Is there going to be trouble? All of us struggle with that. I mean, you may say you don't, but you've got a great excuse not to have to deal with it this year. But the bottom line is, I, I would rather have love in the house. Now, be, let me break it down. I'd rather have love in a T-bone. Why can't we just enjoy the ribeye and love one another? Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Everybody say better. Amen. Proverbs 16, 8. Better a little with righteousness and much with injustice. This is to say it is better to do right and struggle than to do wrong and be rich. Better to follow the rules and go broke than to cheat and climb your way to what you think is the top of the ladder. It's better to struggle to make ends meet, but know that you're righteous in the eyes of God than to cheat other people in the habit. It's better. That's better. Proverbs 16, 19, better to be lowly in spirit and among the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. You know, one of the things I've learned in life is that humility is a position of strength. And there are times I've prayed for success. I've prayed for more. I've prayed for bigger church. I've prayed for this, that, more prestige. And now I've just backed away. And when that song hit me this morning, it hit me. It hit me. Amen. That I, if I could just love the king, if I could just be in his presence, if I'd come with no agenda, that's the best thing that ever happened in my life. Amen. And it just overwhelms me at this age of my life to realize, you know, this week, this week we had one of our members from our North Campus pass away. He was in church uh, last Sunday, uh, a, a week ago Sunday. Went to the hospital, asphyxiated, and died. That fast, 62, 63 years old. Amen. I said his funeral yesterday. And I thought to myself, you don't know what a day holds. That's why I said, if you can't celebrate, go celebrate. Because you don't know what another year is going to happen. I, I'm convinced this thing is not going to be over when you, we hit January 1. It's not some magical thing that's going to take place. Amen. When you hit January 1, hey, it's over. It ain't over. It ain't going to be, it's going to keep going. And if it's a political pastor, it really doesn't matter what I tell you it is. Amen. But I can tell you what I believe, that I'm going to keep trusting God. I'm going to keep living. And I'm going to keep pulling the frog out of the water moccasin's mouth. And I'm going to keep fishing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just got to keep going. So what he's really saying here, a better, it's better to live humbly among the poor than to live it up among the rich and famous. Don't envy the arrogant. Don't envy the arrogant. Don't envy those that think they got it all going. Amen. Many times we look at what they drive and how they dress and this, that, and the other. I'll be honest with you, I'm sickened by it. Amen. I'm sickened by it. I, I like being around. I like, I feel like at times, God, you just, you bless me to pastor people that have, have fit, 
felt like they don't fit in. Amen. And, and, and to be a blessing. I, I've got friends that are wealthy and doing good. I've got friends that don't have a lot. But I've got friends that are just content. Well, no matter what they got, they're contented with what they have. Can I get an amen? Amen. And that is a good thing. Better, better. Now, I've already shared this verse with you, but I'm going to say it again. Proverbs 17, 1. Better dry crust with peace than a quiet, and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife.